Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for Forward DFW Together with the Dallas Morning News. I'm Ron Corning. And a startling statistic, every year seniors in this country are defrauded to the tune of $50 billion. That is $50 billion a year. And they're defrauded through a number of scams and schemes, some of which are so fine-tuned that regardless of your age, you might find yourself a victim. The Senior Source in Dallas is a one-of-a-kind nonprofit organization that helps seniors in a range of ways, but today we are focusing specifically on how seniors are defrauded and how we can help them. Steve Benton is joining us now. He's among those who has taken a leading role at the Senior Source. Thank you for being here, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're in the department of the Senior Source that, that focuses specifically on this kind of fraud. How long have you been in existence? Well, the Senior Source has been around for 61 years, and we formed the Elder Financial Safety Center back in 2014. Mm -hmm. And it is a collaboration of the district attorney's office and the probate courts and the Senior Source to address financial exploitation of seniors. We were all operating in silos. Yeah, it, you, you do mm -hmm. have a track record mm -hmm. of prosecuting those who are out there scamming seniors. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But I want to talk not just about the the, the, the what, what mm -hmm. they do to scam seniors, but, and, and the how, how do we stop it and, and how do we prosecute it, all that's to come. But let's talk about why, the why of all of this. Why are seniors specifically or particularly vulnerable more so than other populations, do you think? Well, there are several reasons. The main reason is they have a big target on their back because 70% of all the assets in the United States are owned by baby boomers and above. So the youngest baby boomer is now 57, approaching retirement. And so all the assets are there. And what's the old adage, why rob banks? That's where the money is. Mm -hmm. So you've mm -hmm. got a combination of they have the assets and they have reduced cognition oftentimes, and they're uh, not keeping up with technology and other things like that. So they're, they're vulnerable. Well, I've often thought it's interesting that when you talk to the advertising world, they're honing in on that you know, 25 to 54, whereas you point out, there's a great deal of wealth being held by and disposable income um, related to anybody who is 65 plus a, mm -hmm. as well. Um, but they're also, as you point out, the technology part of it, it used to be you wanted to look out for your family members who might have a knock on their door from somebody offering to uh, weatherize their home, mm -hmm. right? Those were the early the early kind of door-to-door -door scams and schemes that we that, that we became more mindful of over time. Um, to what degree is technology outpacing your work to catch these guys? Uh, tremendous uh, uh, problems with technology because basically seniors are opening a portal into their home to people they would never answer the door to, mm -hmm. and so via it, email, <laughs> email, Facebook, Facebook. Messaging. Facebook uh, everything. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into some of the scams later, but it's, uh, it's just amazing because it's a social vehicle and, uh, isolation is the biggest problem with seniors today. More people are living alone in the United States today than ever before. So um, because of that isolation, what these scammers know is mm -hmm. that they can create a false sense of meaningful connection mm -hmm. with a senior who might be alone. That's correct. Yeah. At what stage during this process do you often find yourself intervening and stepping in? Um, how much damage is done and how has how far along is any particular scam, whether you quantify that by the amount of money someone has lost or um, the degree to which they're entrapped with someone? Yeah, we get involved on all uh, aspects of the timeline. Uh, the, the seniors' children may be calling us saying, hey, we just found out mom's lost all of her money in a romance scam. And a lot of times the horses are out of the barn, you mm -hmm. know, the money's gone. So we're helping them rebuild their life mm -hmm. a little bit. Other times the police are calling us in. Uh, we've got great relationships with all the local departments here in Dallas County. And they'll ask us to do counseling with certain people that they feel are at risk mm -hmm. uh, because they're starting to do things that uh, are not appropriate. Mm -hmm. And so we try to get involved in their lives that way. You know, it's interesting because all of us are vulnerable. I get text messages mm -hmm. that look like a real link to an Amazon package, and I have enough stuff coming from Amazon on enough of a regular basis that it would be easy enough for me to click on that. I happen to be in the media and maybe more mindful mm 
mm-hmm. not to click on something from a number that I don't necessarily recognize. But I can see how as a matter of age, and not cognitively, but just generationally, my dad, for example, at, a, at 80, takes things at face value. Mm-hmm. If they're reaching out, there must be a problem and I'll answer to it. Yeah, that's the biggest problem is, is trying to convince them to quit taking phone calls mm-hmm. because they've uh, spent their whole life answering the phone. And uh, so we say, quit taking a call, make a call, because that person that's calling doesn't have your best interest at heart. And if they're saying that you've got a problem at the bank, we're calling from the bank, then hopefully it's on your answering machine. And then you can call the bank direct or you can call the credit card company direct. Never call the number that is given to you in a text or, or whatever. I think it's important to say that we, we, we quantified the loss at $50 billion annually, but that is a number that's underreported. In other words, people are not reporting as readily as you would hope the degree to which they're being scammed. And so that number really doesn't reflect the true problem. As we take a break here, I have a question for you. Right now, as we sit here, what is atop the list of scams that people need to be most mindful of? Well, we'll talk about uh, romance scams. Uh, Those are big. That's probably the biggest money loser, Mm -hmm. if you will. And we'll talk about the intricacies of that. But also that your Social Security number has been compromised, has been stolen. And of course, that's third rail issue for seniors. And Mm -hmm. so they immediately go into panic mode. And we'll talk about the cognitive difficulties that they have. They don't connect the dots. And uh, it's really sad. And then, of course, the the third one in line is you've won the lottery without even entering it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they believe that because they need money. And uh, all they have to do is pay the taxes because it's a European lottery. So they fall for that all the time. All right, we're going to do a deeper dive on that, Steve, when we come back here in just a moment. Thank you for being here, everyone. We'll see you right after this. Join us for our upcoming Money Smart for Older Adults class series every Thursday beginning February 2nd in Plano. Go to theseniorsource.org for more. We are back, everyone, and we're talking financial exploitation of seniors and the great work that the Senior Source in Dallas does to combat it. And among those things, of course, is this podcast and, and online content that we're putting out there, which kind of begs the question, if seniors are not technologically literate enough to sort of hand or technically literate enough to handle um, some of these scams that come their way via text or or via email. Are they going to be able to find us and watch us and follow direction here? (laughs) That's interesting. (laughs) Hopefully we're connecting with a lot of their children that are Uh, not watching their parents close enough. Uh, The 80, when people turn 80, that's really the difficult decade. And that's where your children, their children really need to be involved with them because everything goes south starting there. So. Yeah, because there there are there are folks who are in their 70s who are very plugged in oh, yeah. to Facebook and other social media, primarily Facebook, and that's where we're present in part and that's great, but also it's where the scammers live as well and it's how they how they poach people. Is that where some of these romance scams, the genesis of them are? Is it on social media? And what uh, does it look like exactly? Yeah, a lot of it is it's coming from overseas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll take Facebook as an example. Uh, You know, you see everybody wishing each other happy birthday all the time. Well, somebody that's in hacking into Facebook, they'll see all of these women that are saying happy birthday, happy birthday. And now they've got a connection with each one of those. And it's a numbers game. They'll go, hey, I see your your uh, Facebook page. You have a lot of things that I'm interested in. And so they'll develop the relationship. And uh, it's really incredible. I mean, I mean, I've, I've seen those. I've seen those comments show up yeah, they do. from complete strangers in a thread that I've posted on mm-hmm. a Facebook page, and I've seen someone say that to somebody else. Oh, you! I've been on your Facebook page, and you seem really interesting. Oh yeah, somebody is is really reaching out to them, and mm-hmm. they're lonely again. This isolation is a big problem with seniors, but they're on the the internet. And so, in this article, "How Romance Scams Start on Facebook," that I wrote, uh, basically, it's. Uh, they, it's the long game. They will start that relationship and they won't ask for money for six, eight months. And they really develop that love for one another. And Those, they've got how many of these on the line at any one time? Oh, yeah. They've got and a notebook a, full. If it's $1,000 per person and, and they're mm-hmm. kind of communicating with 50 people, mm-hmm. you can start to see how that begins to add yeah. up. And it's a numbers game. And of course, they, they want to exchange pictures and stuff. And so they'll, of course, send a picture and you can uh, put a, any picture on Google and figure out where it came from. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the point of this article was here is William Johnson Clark, the made up name. And he's the New Zealand prime minister. 
And uh, so if they would have just looked at the picture, they'd realize that's not the person they're talking to. But they don't think like that. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Not to make this about me, but when I was anchoring local news in Dallas, I got a call from a reporter in Wichita and my pictures had been sure. used by a guy who claimed to be from Georgia, whose name was Rob, a different last name, and, and a woman had given him money. Yep. Uh, they never asked for my picture, so uh, <laughs> that's good. Ever? Come on. <laughs> there was a time. There was a time. Come on, Steve. Yeah, um, so you've got these Facebook scammers that target women, primarily, as the t uh, statistics show, 60 to 75, mm -hmm. divorced. And again, that may be something that they mine from their Facebook page mm -hmm. because they post, it's been a year since you've been gone, and it's it's in, in memory of a spouse or during a birthday greeting, someone says, I know it's been a tough year for you, but we're here for you. Mm -hmm. And those kinds of things probably indicate to a scammer. So 60 to 75 for women. Men who are 80 plus, you said that's a difficult decade, a difficult mm -hmm. time. And men who are 80 plus are most vulnerable. Is it because they're less connected socially than women, generally speaking? Well, typically these, these uh, males that fall for these romance scams, they have been married their entire life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they are the caregiver as their spouse has gone mm -hmm. down. Now they're just lonely as can be. They're being stalked at Sam's and Walmart uh, because they're easy pickings. And people will approach them, uh, young women with toddlers. Mm -hmm. And the guy, it may not be a sexual thing. It's just they're lonely. Right. And I've got this 3,500 square foot house. It's empty. Why don't you just come you know, live there? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've had that happen a number of times. Your social security number is stolen. The U.S. Treasury agent is calling to help mm -hmm. you. They don't call, they write. Yes, IRS and social security never call, mm -hmm. they write. And so when you're getting calls from the treasury agents, it's always a scam. And uh, just one quick story, you know, a mesquite woman, uh, never been married. And uh, so she was called and her social security number had been stolen. It had been used to rent a car who uses a social security number to rent a car, but you're not thinking clearly because again, all of a sudden they're panicked and it was driven to Austin, used in a drug deal and there was a murder. Okay, and so you're just ratcheting it up the fear that she may feel she's somehow culpable. Well, she proceeded to, to, to send 230,000 worth of cash over about a five month period, boxed up in FedEx boxes all over the country. And she was meticulously keeping her receipts because she was told that that $5,000 was going to be reimbursed to her. So we were able to finally convince her, you know, with the help of a mesquite uh, police detective, that she was being scammed. Mm. And, but it took, uh, took a long time to convince her. I mean, it took was, a long yeah, time to con convince, convince her. her. Yeah. And that may speak to some of, uh, of what, it's, what it means to get older, right? Mm -hmm. We're living longer mm -hmm. in terms of our bodies are, you know, our hearts still pumping. But in terms of our cognitive ability, it's still statistically, it shows, evidence shows, continues to decline. So you're less likely to really understand saliently what's happening. Yeah, so that's correct. So it's uh, uh, one in 10 at 65, you begin to experience cognitive difficulties. One in three at 85. So once you reach 65, you got a pretty good chance of reaching your mid 80s. Mm -hmm. And so you see that cognitive decline there. And so you talked about long longevity because we're making so many medical advances. You know, we're fixing the heart, we're addressing cancer, we're doing lungs and things like that. And so we're fixing the body parts Okay, but maybe the brain's not keeping up and maybe we just haven't seen this before because everybody died earlier mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, of these yeah. things. And so that cognitive difficulty, you, your, your decisions are made in your frontal lobe. And so it doesn't mature until you're 22, 24 years old. And so you have this bell curve of making good, well, maybe not good decisions, but decisions, logical decisions. But as you age, that begins to deteriorate and you begin to see it. 70s and 80s and that's what's going on and that's why again if we've got a younger audience watching this what are your parents up to before we had to break mm -hmm. so if something happens I, I don't want to say this goes without saying but the lottery that you didn't enter you didn't win it mm -hmm. that you, we just have to ingrain in people that if you have a question about something you're better off erring on the side of caution that mm -hmm. you did not win the lottery. But when it comes to a family emergency or a phone call about a tragedy or something to that extent, and someone is lonely and alone and they don't have the senior source readily available, who do they turn to? Who do they call? Well, they just need to, uh, again, be aware of safety. And that's why the isolation is so critical 
uh, they're just not making good decisions. And when you're with a social group, when you're with a church group, and you say, hey, I've got this going on, and then there's voices there, there's eyes on them. And that's one of the big deals in romance scams is they don't listen to trusted friends, trusted mm -hmm. family, because they're so in love. And it's real. Yeah, and, the feelings uh, are real. Yeah. Perception so, is reality uh, in this case. But, but the biggest deal is the gift cards, okay? Nobody settles anything with gift cards, especially the government. And that's where the easy money is because that number on the back of that gift card is like cash. Uh -huh. And so you just don't ever use gift cards except for gifting to somebody you know. If you've never met anybody, never give a gift card. It's always a scam. All good so. advice, Steve. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're going to have more when we come back as we wrap things up. Stay with us right after this. Check out other upcoming classes and events on our website calendar, thisseniorsource.org slash classes and training. All right, everyone, we are back with Steve Benton from The Senior Source, and we want to advance this conversation to how you can plan for uh, helping the senior in your life. Because in many cases, as you point out, Steve, this is, this is as much about the family being informed as it is the elder um, in their life. And having been down that road myself, I, I fully understand that. Where do you start? And at what age do you start? Mm -hmm. Well, you got to understand the, the dysfunctional family units today in America. You have the distance where your kids are spread out all over the country and mom and dad may be isolated. And so there's not eyes on them, family eyes. And so that's why, you know, holidays are a good time to put your eyes on your parents to see if there's been any cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's all sorts of clues along the way. It's interesting when you don't see your parents for a mm -hmm. period of time, even a year which can seem relatively short, when they get into those older ages, mm -hmm. you do see year over year a little bit more mm -hmm. decline in a more poignant way, I think. Um, and so to be mindful of that, is one thing. What's the first step? When do you have the conversation with your own parents, mm -hmm. who in many cases parented you and helped you with your financial security? When do you turn the script and begin to tell them, I'm concerned about your financial future, or I want to keep an eye on how you're interacting with people and your money? Yeah. And you got to realize that they're very independent minded and they don't want to share that of course. with you. And so you've got to penetrate that veil. And so we have different tools. One of them is the conversation starter kit. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes out of a website. We'll post that information up there for you. But as you gather together with your parents, you talk about what is the next decade look like for you. You know, you're declining. You know, what is your end of life planning? Uh, you need to have that conversation. It's just amazing how many people get to that point and they've never really talked money. They've never really talked uh, what their final plans are. Having the conversation is one thing, but but advancing that to action mm -hmm. is, is another. And you recommend um, having a power of attorney. So that is a means by which a child or somebody else in your life would have the authority to make decisions for you if you're not able yeah. What does that look like? Well, uh, the, the power of a uh, general durable financial power of attorney is a two edged sword. You know, we, we, we talk about uh, it can be a sword or a shield. In mm -hmm. most of the cases, it is a family member that's there to protect mom and dad uh, when they're not making good decisions. It could be medical and financial. But unfortunately, a lot of our cases, uh, especially on the family side, are moms in memory care and daughters out spending all of her money with her power of attorney that she's been granted. So it is a, a dangerous tool that you're giving all power or somewhat a lot of power to a person that uh, maybe not have your best interest at heart. Is that where the dual power of attorney comes in? Is that an added layer? Are we literally talking about a second power of attorney? Is it one overseeing the other? What does that look like? Well, there needs to be transparency no matter how you get there. In other words, you give one sibling the power you're giving them all power, and there's no guarantee that they'll share. In fact, it's uh, on a need-to-know basis, I'll tell you when you need to know. And that's really true because she, mom, has just empowered one of you. And so I always recommend uh, transparency where the other siblings can see the bank account and so forth and regular meetings about it. And that, that makes that person accountable. And that, that's written into the power of attorney. Yeah. Yeah, that's, all that, the that's details one of the parameters. and so forth. Yeah, yeah. and see, it, it's an unregulated part of uh, uh, the business. Is no, there's there's no overseer of power of attorneys until things go south, mm -hmm. and then that all comes out. And I know the senior source. You're incredibly active in getting the messaging out there and providing resources and avenues, mm -hmm. including. Uh, yeah, seminar coming up in February, which kind of takes a holistic approach and then digs a little deeper into all of these things from scams to uh, planning for 
long-term care perhaps and managing mm -hmm. money into retirement. But what about for those places where that doesn't exist, where the senior source doesn't exist? You are in a lot of ways unique in, in your approach and in your scope and in the way in which you reach people where they are. Not every community has that advantage. Yeah, we've, we've got a lot of history and a lot of following, you know, here in Dallas. So it it's, makes it easier. But what you're referring to is our Money Smart for Older Adults. It's mm -hmm. a four-week course, two hours a week. And uh, we cover eight eight or so topics. It can be insurance, how to buy insurance, financial planning as you age, end-of-life planning, scams and frauds, the benefits that are available uh, to people at certain ages and so forth. So it's just uh, a high-end education for uh, aging seniors. Free will clinics, that's part of what you do as well. Mm -hmm. And a YouTube channel, I mean, taking advantage of right. technology in that way to reach people where they are. And, and again, that may be specifically more geared toward uh, the, the children of those who are aging to be informed because they're connected there, maybe on YouTube more readily. Right. Uh, that, that's And we have a lot of things on our website. During COVID, we recorded a lot of our programs. Mm -hmm. And so they are there. Uh, so. When you take a hard line approach and you prosecute mm -hmm. in these cases, someone who's masterminding a scam that is taking advantage of seniors, do you think it makes a difference? Do you think mm -hmm. it sets the tone? Do you think it deters others from going that route, what effect is it having, do you think? Well, we, we've had some big cases that have been involved. And uh, so when you say we prosecute, we refer right. to the district attorney. You work attorney. with in collaboration. Yeah, the district but attorney. But that's part of your, one. that's one of your goals. One of yeah. your many goals is to to make sure that that's that these yeah. folks are and brought was, to justice. What was happening when, when you had elder abuse, elder financial abuse, those cases were getting shuffled to the bottom of the deck, unfortunately, because they always went for the big cases and so forth. So when we formed the Elder Financial Safety Center, uh, we were able to get uh, two full-time prosecutors, full-time investigators that do nothing but senior cases. Mm -hmm. And that's been a big help. So uh, they're getting referrals from Adult Protective Services. They're getting referrals from us and other places. And are the facilities that many seniors live in, be they independent living, assisted living, are they doing a better job as well at sort of keeping keeping an eye on or understanding what each of their individual residents' needs are financially and so forth? Well, one of the advantages of independent living is you have more eyes on people and assisted livings. And so, uh, you know, there's pros and cons there's there. There's community. But, yeah, there's community there, and they're coming together at meals and sharing. And conversations yeah, so do that, happen. That isolation, right. you know, is not there. So you're, you're pretty much there. But at the same time, uh, facilities really need to do a, a good job of screening everybody that walks in the door. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the recent cases that you've been reading about in the paper with the, uh, the, the murders that took place, unfortunately, that has really upgraded a lot of the securities in these places. So that's good. Um, one final note, personal, as we, as we leave folks here today, you, you started your career and spent most of your career until retirement doing wealth management and financial mm -hmm. planning and, and all of those things. Now that you're able to take all of that knowledge and all of that experience and use it in this way means what to you as you grow older? Oh, right. It, it is fantastic because it's a, a transition from success to significance. You know, now I'm doing significant stuff and I love it in a different uh, demographic than I only... And making a difference. You yeah, feel it. You exactly. see it. Exactly. That's what keeps me working at this age. I mean, yeah. I, I want to come in. So there you go. Well, it's great to have you, Steve. Thank you for all the work that you do in, in helping seniors and, and at the Senior Source and for everything the Senior Source does as well as, as we said here at the beginning, a one-of-a-kind uh, nonprofit organization here in Dallas. And as always, thank you for joining us for Forward DFW together with the Dallas Morning News. I'm Ron Corning. We'll see you next time. You can connect with The Senior Source through our website, theseniorsource.org. Email us at info at theseniorsource.org or give us a call, the number is on your screen.